right, so good evening, ladies. I want to start by thanking you all for joining me tonight to have a discussion amongst women. Leading Ladies Canada, and I am sure most of you, are missing the days where we could go on vacation, a weekend getaway, a night out, go for dinner, or even just a coffee with our girlfriends. Those get-togethers were our opportunities to have a great discussions between women where the conversations were educational, inspirational, uplifting, funny, and sometimes even a little dirty. Our opportunities to share these moments with our friends have become very limited and for some non-existent since the COVID-19 pandemic. In order to try and bring on some positivity and a little bit of sisterhood conversation, Leading Ladies Canada has been working on developing a series of discussions amongst ladies from all walks of life on various topics. You will be hearing us discussing a range of topics and sharing our opinions. However, don't forget, these are our opinions and hence they are not fact. Our purpose with these discussions is simply to provide a platform for women to share their life expertise, experience, knowledge, and opinions on certain subjects. We hope that these discussions will allow you, the viewers, to think, reflect, question, learn, and grow. Tonight, the topic we will be discussing is the five love languages. The most common issue in any relationship is the communication barrier. Everyone experiences love differently, and it's easy to miss the mark when it comes to showing your partner that you care. By identifying your love language, you will be able to know how to use your love language to connect with others and have more harmonious relationships. So the ladies that are joining the conversation tonight have all taken the test and will be sharing our results with each other. Tonight, for the discussion, we have Martine, also known as Titine. <laughs> we have Marie-Ange, which is the founder of Leading Ladies Canada. We have Victoria, which is also a member of Leading Ladies, and she is our mental health advocate. We have Lydia, who is an entrepreneur. And we have Miss Sophia J, who is an influencer, hairstylist, and relationship coach in training. So ladies, let's get comfortable and let's talk. So <laughs> are you ladies ready? Yes. 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 All, right. <laughs> All right. So let's start by naming the five love languages and which one of us falls under which love language. So Sophie, I'll give you the floor. Okay, so I don't know if any, well, I've, obviously you guys know, but I'm sure that there are some viewers who will probably be like, five love language, what is that? So this book, this amazing book that Cassandra, you know, like we've all, we've, we, all the lady of us, we all took the test. It is by Gary, um, Dr. Gary Chapman. And the title of the book is entitled um, The Five Love Languages. And the five love languages is basically a secret to keep, um, it's basically a secret to keep love lasting because believe it or not, we all have different love languages. Just like some of us, we speak English. Some of us, we speak French. Um, some of us, we have different love languages. So these love languages are very, very important. And the five love languages are as, fo are as follow. So the first one is um, words of affirmation. Quality time, which I personally love. Same, <laughs> same. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Receiving gifts, which I also, also absolutely love. <laughs> Act of service, as well as physical touch. I actually wanted to ask, did any of you ladies, um, were, you, were any of you ladies really surprised and or shocked by the answer of your um, quiz? No, yes. no. I, I was. Um, Why were you shocked, Martin? <laughs> what was uh, yours? What did mine you get? was act of services. Really? Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe you answered that question. correctly. <laughs> but you gotta say, I think oh, it's because yeah. the way I evaluate myself, it was with my past experience. You know what I mean? Mm. So I was with someone that would never do anything for me, that I had to do my own thing. So when I was doing the test, I was like, damn, I would love someone to do this for me. Oh, you so, oh yeah, this. So at the end, when I read about the result, I was like, 
of course I want to come home and someone's doing lunch. Of course. <laughs> So I think that's how I value myself. But I think if I would have to redo it, get into a new relationship and actually value myself again, that might change. Okay. So yeah. Sophie, could you give us a little bit? Can you go into acts of service and what it entails? What are the... Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So Martin, I'm actually really happy that you brought that a past experience probably made you, um, you know, pick those specific answer in the question, because mm -hmm. the five love languages, it also goes back to number one, how we saw our parents or, you know, the people who raised us show affection or, you know, how they show their, their own love languages in your household, as well as your past experiences. So I'm really happy that you realize that because a lot of people, <laughs> it takes a lot of courage and a lot of, um, you know, a maturity for on your on your end to notice like, you know what? It could have been because of my past experiences because right. an act of service, it's really like some people, sometimes they have misconception of act of service. You know, the, the person's always going to be cooking for you. It's more than that. It's maybe like, you know, you ask the person or, or you don't even ask the person take the garbage out without you asking, yeah, you know, yeah. it's literally, it's the little simple, um, acts that basically, um, identify as an act of service. I think oftentimes when we think of service, we think way more than, you know, like you have to cater to the person and you, you know, you have to go above and beyond, but it could really be as simple as taking out the garbage. And it's like, wow, like, thank you. So Cass, to answer your that's question, true. that's basically, it's, I know it sounds really cliche, but these little, little information are crucial for us to understand in order to keep this fire burning in our relationship. Mm -hmm. So what would be, um, I think I had, what would be a definition of acts of service? Like, could you give us more examples? I think I, I had read a little bit, like if I hold on, I'm just acts of service, which translates to showing and feeling love through helpful service, such as cooking a meal or cleaning out the car. So I found it interesting that you said that oftentimes our love language may reflect on what we would like, right? Absolutely. So it's not, yeah. So I find that interesting. And I know Maxine personally, and you do, girl, you do deserve <laughs> someone <laughs> to take out the garbage for you, okay? <laughs> was there anybody else that was surprised by their, um, by their answer? Marianne, what was your experience with your, um, with your quiz? Did you have a chance to take it? I have both, but that surprise, the act of service came out as one of them. I was like, oh, really? So I kind of uh, look, I'm like, oh, why? And I was like, oh, that's true. Like, I don't usually, uh, my husband usually would do this you know, uh, like all your change, taking care of my, you know, my kids. Like I'm busy nowadays with living ladies and a bunch of stuff. It would just handle the kids and uh, even uh, just do the homework with the kids and help with the house. I'm like, oh, it just, I think the part of like, knowing what I'm doing and thinking about it and just do it without me asking for it. Mm. You know, that is just like, okay, it's true. And I like that. And I like the fact that it just can handle, you know, just like some easy stuff as take care of the garbage or even uh, the snow outside and even just the kids most of the time. And I can do other stuff. And then he's thinking about, yes, my wife can be busy doing other stuff, but I can help out with the house stuff. I'm like, oh, I like that. And just, <laughs> Uh, as simple thing as bringing some food, you know, serving yeah. guys, <laughs> you know, just the car, like, oh, this is really something that I like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm really what was your other one? You said yes. you had two. Oh, <laughs> Yes, that is so much. So really That's so her. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually I'm not surprised by that one. <laughs> but Marianne, I actually wanted to mention that you know how you said that you didn't really realize it's, and again, I wanted to bring that point because knowing what your partner or even yourself love language is is really important because these little things that your partner is doing, it's also important to encourage your partner. Like, because when you then notice that, hey, I came home, he cooked, 
he didn't have to, but it's as simple as like, Hey honey, you cook. Like, I appreciate it. I think like, you know, growing up there, there are certain things that we may are not, we have, we are not accustomed to, you know, it's to give that little compliment and it's to reassure your partner that like, Hey, I see you Mm -hmm. keep doing this because I love it. And when we notice our own love language, we're now able to, you know, really communicate that with our partner because, you know, our partners, sometimes they'll do something, but everybody love encouragement. I'm Mm -hmm. sure when you cook and you know, your husband loved the food and he's like, honey, this food was good and you feel good. Right. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) it's the same way knowing and identifying your partner's love language Girl, you're going to just secure that relationship longer, longer, and longer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What did you have, Victoria? Um, I had, um, sorry, quality time. <laughs> I had, uh, like, it was, yeah, my top, top highest. And then my second one was words of affirmation. So me you know, for me, like, yeah, they, they were hand for me, um, you know, quality time is really important especially during this time with covid and how how it's impacted all of our mental health mm-hmm. in general right maybe like some some have had really bad experiences some some of that some people have had really really good experiences but um but there are a lot i mean i work with i, I work in telehealth, health and so i'm getting a lot of responses where it's like i'm alone and I need to spend time with my mom that I haven't seen in six months. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know like th- this is different, but I'm just saying like, this is just how important it is to know your love language because this is how you know that, you know, that you're doing well mentally and spiritually and physically as well. You know what I mean? Like, you know what to look for and what you know, what you need to know um, just for your own self sense of self you know what I mean just knowing being self-aware knowing who you are like when I did this quiz I, it's not that I was surprised but I really like their explanation of what each one was and I'm like yeah that, y- you know what yeah that's true like that that resonates with me that's good like it's good for my mental health like, <laughs> mm-hmm. you, know, it was just, you know I'm like it's just I don't know. For me, like it was really good. Like my last one, Marianne was receiving gifts. <laughs> I don't do gifts. I'm like, I'm- no, me too. I'm at three percent for gifts. Like, me too. it's me not too. important to me. I mean, I won't say no to a diamond. I won't say oh. no to some nice <laughs> shoes. But it's not what what motivates it's not. me. Not it's not. keep going. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. not a motivating factor for me. And mm-hmm. that that like, my quiz, to be honest with you, like I guess what most of us here I was not surprised because a lot of us know already what we what we like and what we want out of a relationship man women 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 whatever family whatever we we know what we want already um however it was really um insightful I guess to to go through the quiz and 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 the fact that they were asking what's more what's more meaningful to you yes like to me that was like And you know what? I think I got my 3% from some of the questions where it said, like, do you prefer this and you prefer that? that. I'm like, well, in this situation, I want the gift. Exactly. That's true. That's really true. Yeah. I think like for our listeners, um, because obviously you guys have taken the quiz, one thing that I would really encourage our listeners to do is a lot of time we know we want to spend quality time, right? We're like, I really want to spend quality time, but like my partner is always working. He's always working. He doesn't have time for me. Instead of saying that, you have to be very intentional on when. And I think like oftentimes mm. we don't take the steps. Instead of saying, honey, like, you know, we never spend time together. You've been working. You should say, hey, babe, what's your schedule next Thursday? What's your okay. schedule um, next month on the 5th? What's your schedule in two weeks? I think we have to be very intentional. If you know that your, your own um, love language is quality time, you have to make the steps. And by making steps, by, by making steps, I mean, be very intentional. It's not just like, you know, I'm going to have my day off next week. I hope he has his day off next week too. And you know what? We'll just catch Netflix. No, honey, I'm, I'm off on the fifth. 
Are you up on the fifth? Maybe we can go for a walk. I think like prioritizing and scheduling. I know for some people it's really weird, but scheduling like your time with your partner is as, yeah. as important as cutting that check, <laughs> as as important as um, closing that business deal. Because at the end of the day, right. you really make time for what matters for you. And if you're quality That's time, true. you have to be intentional. Like right. put it right. in the calendar. I'm sorry. I feel no shame. I'll be like, honey, do you want to do on church on Tuesday or Saturday? Mm -hmm. Very yeah. specific. <laughs> right. so you make a good point with quality time versus quantity, right? It, even if it's once a month that you have that special time, yeah. like you make it that much more special. Mm -hmm. I, I, I completely agree. My top one was also quality time. I love making memories in anything. I just Amen. love being able to reminisce and, oh, you remember two months ago we did this? Like to me, that's so much fun. And if yeah. it's consistent, then even if it happens only once a month, that's enough to keep me going right yeah. to keep me motivated and, and engaged versus if it doesn't happen like every six months ah, that's too ah, that's too mm, not enough not, not often enough right so right. it's really balancing the quantity and the quality of it like you said if, think, if your partner is busy Matt, schedule it i think because people make it so taboo <laughs> Like, I mean, well, I schedule though. my business. I'm also scheduling you, but eventually people get into the hang. <laughs> but it's not, though, girls. Like, ladies, it's not. <laughs> Dating, right the whole point of having a healthy relationship is communicating our needs right and so but by telling your partner oh you know what like um next whatever next you know next sunday is valentine's day we're doing this a b and c like lydia says it's about building those memories and talking about it later right okay. so that's what like that's what makes us like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, true, true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's fun. It's engaging, like you said. And it's exciting because you, you're you now thinking about the next fun thing. Like, you're thinking about the next plan. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what quality time means to me. Yeah. Did anybody get um, physical touch? I'm curious to know because I really wanted to touch base on That's that. a man thing. A lot of men. <laughs> I a had lot. a 10% physical touch. I you guys like to hug? <laughs> How much did you get? <laughs> guys, it's more than sex. Physical touch is more than sex. And that's why I really wanted to, um, I really wanted to talk about that specific love language because when people hear physical touch, like, mm, no, no, it's yeah. not. <laughs> tonight, <laughs> not tonight. <laughs> And I think physical touch is really always come up that like, taboo for black people. Exactly. You know? That's why I wanted to bring it up. Black men doesn't really want to do that. But I think it's so important that me, I always say, like, oh, can you just touch me in public? I love that. Mm. But it will be something like, mm, I'm an African it's man. holding hands. Yeah. I have that. You know, that's so important for black community, that physical touch. Yeah, it is. and yeah. we didn't really hands. grow up like that, you know. We didn't see yeah. people holding hands at the mall or having their hand, the dad having the hand on the mom's bum and just oh. rolling. Like we didn't have that. <laughs> we didn't. Yeah, I didn't see that. I didn't see my parents kissing until I was much older. Mm -hmm. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Me too. <laughs> like, I, and it was amazing. Actually, I was like, oh, that's so nice. Like they actually like each other. Like you know. What I mean? <laughs> Because I didn't see that. I saw a lot of, you know, money this, money that. Yeah. That's what I saw in my household growing up. So that's right. really important how it impacts us now, mm -hmm. today as older women. And I mean, I'm still young, sorry. But I'm just saying, like, it's still, <laughs> it, it impacts us in a way because, like Cassandra said, we, I didn't see that. I did not see that. Mm -hmm. So what tip would you have physical touch? Marion said something. Oh. I thought, it, I, sorry. Go ahead. What did Marion oh, okay. say? I didn't. Yeah, know. no. Marie, Marion said something. I thought it was really interesting, and I again, I wanted to elaborate on that. Marion said that you know you, you want to do a little bit of PDA, and your partner is like, mm, you know, I'm a black man. This may not be his love language, and mm -hmm. a lot of time we were like, oh, I want this. He's not doing this. He's not doing that. You now have to figure out your partner's love language, and if he doesn't even know it himself. I would encourage you guys as well as whoever um, our listeners to tap in into that because knowing your own love language is great, beautiful, you know, congrats because now you understand what you really want to, you know, how you want to be loved. But being with someone 
and not understanding their love language. It's like saying I'm speaking Creole and he's speaking Spanish. Mm. This, there's no, there's gonna be major disconnect because what's gonna happen is that you crave that, um, you know, that PDA, that like hug and like kissing or whatever. And him, it may, sometimes I feel like, we you know, we always go back to the race because again, it could be the way he, he, he was raised and the way he didn't really see it at home, but it could also be like, I just don't want to, I just don't want to feel like I'm locked. I don't want to walk around holding hands and he's okay. It's, it's he okay. doesn't want to feel locked. Is he yours? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like sometimes people just really don't like that. Like maybe his own love language could be something completely different. And I think the most beautiful thing about a relationship is really discovering each other and finding like what you guys like and what you can be you know what can be compatible and at the end of the day yes sometimes you may not be the same but there's also going to be like a happy medium mm-hmm. and, and then compromise, you and have compromise. compromise so how though. do you compromise so like let's say i'm quality time and my partner is physical touch okay i can give an example that's two that's like my husband and me okay quality time that's my husband physical touch that's me so we need to compromise like you have to like usually in a year i have what i want to do for the 12 months so that quality time is one of uh, in my list you know every month we have to have a quality time just him and me with no kids you know mm-hmm. so you put on the schedule every month and like me myself i like some touching outside i don't want to be in the house like i want outside you go you know walking outside just hold their hands or just kiss so you have to compromise and talk in communication. That's yes. Me. I need that. Yeah. I need to be kissed outside. I need to be touched. So, and I know my husband want to have his quality time at home. So I have to put in my schedule this month, this day, that's a time, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what like- about the essence of spontaneity though, guys? Like we're, I know we're talking about scheduling and it's important for us too, because we're busy women, you know, but what about the spontaneity piece? Like I, I'm it not can still the- happen where the activity you're going to do together is a surprise. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like there's different mm-hmm. ways to do it. So let's say, all right, just be ready this day at eight o'clock, dress this way. I'm taking you somewhere. Yeah. And then it can be a picnic yeah. in the park or, you know, a movie, whatever it is, but it's just the element of surprise. That's where you add that something heavy. Mm-hmm. just, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So yeah. Last question. You said, um, I think you said, you know, like if you're a different love language and your partner does it, mm-hmm. I know this is going to be like, oh, okay, that's, that's it. Guys, it's really communication. Like, for yeah. example, if you were to come home, okay, your partner was supposed to, I don't know, do make food for, for the household and he didn't. I know me, I'm walking out, I'm pissed. And it's like, <laughs> you didn't, okay, I'm mad. But over the time, over the years, I've learned that I now need to check myself and see how am I going to address it later on once I've calmed down. And I think the best way is to really like be vulnerable and be like, you know what, honey, like when I came home, I was really tired. You didn't do the dishes. Like I felt a little insulted because you didn't honor your word. I think it's so important for us, especially I'm going to speak for myself as a black woman. We just need to kind of like, you know, like just learn to know how to use our words in a way that we can really get what you want. Because at the end of the day, communication by communicating properly, yeah. the world is yours. Like That's literally. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And all and aspects of life, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we need to learn to tame our tongues too. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, that, that's a hard whatever. Line. Do you mean, <laughs> girl? I know, I know you know. <laughs> yeah, but you guys, there's also like a lot of personal development courses. I've like for me, I'm like a huge, big, big personal development junkie. Like I'm on LinkedIn has courses, YouTube. Yes. I will literally look on YouTube how to like um, resolve conflict with your partner. Mm-hmm. I believe that if you don't research it, you're not going to learn because I didn't, I didn't grow up watching my mom maybe like explaining to my dad, like, honey, you know, it was more like, I'm upset. Give me a time because when I'm mad, then when I'm done being upset, then we'll just go back to regular. Mm-hmm. There's no regular until we address it. Yeah. That's just me anyway. Because like That's eventually it. it's going to bubble up <laughs> and like, 
you know so yeah. I a really lot of the, you guys. a lot of the examples we've seen as well is our parents just the mom cooks for the dad or her job is to take care of the house at quality time what's quality time I've never seen well my mom became a little more modern over the years and would watch movies with her boo and us like we were all together <laughs> watching movies but it wasn't when I was younger I don't remember her ever you know doing these things like going for a stroll going for a walk it was just like you know our moms they cook they clean they take care of the kids and that's, that's, how, that's how they show love like it you know and, it, and it, it's I and now as a mother as a wife it is fun for me to be able to display my love language I guess which is quality time my kids do see me all the time having quality time with their father you know we're out and about all the time sometimes they're included sometimes they're not when they're not included they get upset but it's like hey mommy and daddy need to spend some time together you know if you want us if you want to have a happy home <laughs> you need to make sure that we are happy you know right. so we are it's fun that we're having this discussion because it's kind of like we're opening our mindset to evolving and developing our relationships in order to be able to also give our children the different our children are different um aspect a different view as to what it is to be in a relationship so they can in a healthy relationship healthy exactly because relationship. it's healthy. easy to repeat patterns that we've seen yeah yeah that that's what you're showing to your kids that's what that's they're, right. they'll know when they're in their own relationship when they're older oh well yeah. mommy and daddy always had their own time so they'll make a priority yeah. out of that themselves that's it that's yeah. it yeah yeah and i think I it's important to say that for my life to change because right now as a single mom <laughs> with three kids I want to have my quality time. And right now it's at 10% and it's the last one on my list. Oh, really? Ooh. Right. Yeah. What like was your I, main one? I forget. What did you say? Uh, Act of service. Act okay. service, yeah. Yeah. And then my second one was word affirmation. Mm. And then it was receiving gifts. I do like receiving gifts. But, <laughs> and then it was physical touch you know so yeah but physical touch, touch could be like maybe you're watching a movie and your partner is just like like you know like touching your arms and like touching your legs like cat. hugging you yeah <laughs> Max is like I don't have time for this right now <laughs> we're good I have something personal to say like I know like for me like I just started dating this person and uh, one of the first things he said and he's quite insightful was like what are your love languages? And I'm like, oh, Ooh, that's yeah. okay. He's a keeper. <laughs> He's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> Baby. Baby, I, can't, I can't even tell you. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it, it's, I think like, you know, we as women, we're very insightful, very intuitive and very, you know, like we, we like to know these things. We like to do these quizzes. Um, you know, when we were younger, we probably did a lot of Cosmo quizzes too. Like <laughs> if he likes you, you know, that's right. almost innate in us. Right. But I find that men like the knowledge in knowing these differences and nu nuances. So we how do, do. You, like, like this man asking me, I was like, I know about the love languages, but what do you know? Like, that's amazing mm -hmm. that he asked that right off the bat to know how I respond and how I receive love. Mm -hmm. And that's thing a good one. Add, yeah. Go ahead, Sophie. Oh, that's okay. Go ahead. Another no, thing I wanted to add, like, no, <laughs> oh, I, with Zoom, I go ahead. No, you go ahead. I want to know <laughs> what you have to say. No, I was just going to say something that Victoria said. It's about him being able to um, to even communicate that just the fact that um, especially a black man that's able to communicate right. that that is huge huge because they're not used to, to talking as much as you know women yes okay let's let's go with the standard here we do talk a lot sometimes but for yeah. men to be able to even identify that whether it's saying the words five love languages or just what but do you need because so many times you're like, like well he should know no, sometimes you have to tell them. He doesn't yeah. know. <laughs> but, but is it is it black or because I because I'm talking about a white man here. So is oh, that different? okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 That's a whole different conversation. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 no. Don't apologize. It's amazing that you even said it. Oh, no, I'm, I'm very, very, said it. very proud right now. Mm. What? I said I think, Dr. Oh, Gary will be very proud. <laughs> yes, he would. <laughs> He's still a keeper. 
Yes, <laughs> <Right>. absolutely. <laughs> My question is, do I have a like, question for the five yeah. love languages? Do you think for Black people, Black community, we have maybe different ones? Or are we still, you know, in that five? Mm. I no, it's still it's in the five. The five. Mm -hmm. I, no, it's still in the five because the five, they're, they're made, the, the five has really been categorized as like it, all different aspects of um, love languages fall into a category. So, um, for example, act of service could be like cooking, um, it could be taking out the garbage, and the list goes on and on. It's not limited. So, what to answer your question, it definitely applied to all ethnicity. However, yeah. the question really goes back to we as, you know, African American, we need to now dig and understand that, hey, I may have trauma from the way I grew up. So it does not mean yeah. that we, you know, we have different um, love languages. It just simply needs, means that we need to identify which one we belong to based on how we were raised based on based on our um past experiences as well as what makes you feel good mm -hmm. yeah and if you go back to what uh, Titin was saying at the beginning she took the test based on what has happened to her so mm -hmm. taking the test at the beginning of it when you start learning and understanding what trauma you may have had versus taking it after once you work through that trauma could be two different results Absolutely. Yes. And yeah. it's okay to change. It, you course. change sometimes. And I think I think sometimes, you know, you could be like, oh well, my partner changed. He was he didn't he he changed. No, his love language changed because you know, as we grow older, we go through different experiences and like mm -hmm. no one is stagnant. Like you change, you changing is part of growing. And I think like also let's normalize changing and be okay with that. Like you may you may notice that. Hey, I never used to really like gifts, but as I'm getting older, yes, give me, give me that Chanel bag, give me that gift, give me that, <laughs> give me that, give me that, give me that, give me that roses for Valentine's Day. You may have not really cared for Valentine's Day that much, but maybe as you get older, maybe you do care for Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. and that's okay. We change. Yeah, right. that's okay. And it's the simplest the thing. I wanted to say it's not just with our partners as well. It can be with uh, yeah. families and friends, families and, and friendships. Family, you know. Like, yeah, it's been serving, you know. I love my friends to, you know, to prompt me sometimes to serve and help me, so that can be in everything, yeah. Yeah, oh my that God. is true. It does apply. Like for me, my the, my top one was quality time. And everyone who knows me knows I love just hanging out. I just love, you know, going out to eat, having a glass of wine, hanging out with my friends, my family, getting people together. So yeah, I do like that. It does apply to our personal lives, not just our relationships, but just who we are in life or where we're at in life as well. Yeah. I wanted to also let you ladies know that, um, and whoever to our viewers, there's actually way more than just five love languages. There's five sex languages. Ooh. There's five. <laughs> there's five apology love languages. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so I really I know want that to encourage one. you guys. Like, honestly, and I think like if people follow me on Instagram, they always see that I'm such a bubbly person. And it really goes to say that I take time to really do this, the inner work. Like I make so much, um, I spend so much time learning about myself and I do a lot of personal devil you are, you know what your non-negotiables are, you know what's gonna make you happy. Yeah. You're gonna be a happy person because eventually what, what's gonna happen is that you're going to have boundaries when you, you know, in friendship, maybe some of your friends may not speak your five apology love languages, mm -hmm. uh, your five apology languages. And you might have to, you know, like that friend may not take you to the, go with the next journey with you. So I really want to encourage you guys to not let this just be a conversation. Now dig into yourself, find more about yourself, because I'm telling you guys, when you find out who you are and you know, your non-negotiables, your life, literally you go to the next step. I love that. Oh, well, thank you, Sophie. Nice. Like <laughs> thank you so much. I, so I think we're good. This discussion is going to have to unfortunately come to a close. I'm just going to list the five love languages in order. Well, not in order of importance, but just in uh, the five, just in case the, our viewers didn't get them. Um, and I'm going to encourage them to, you know, like you said, so, uh, Sophie, to do some research and, you know, take some quizzes and find out what their love languages are. Uh, so the first one was words of affirmation, which means that more than anything, we feel loved or 
show our love through verbal praise, compliments, and expressions of love. The second one was quality time. People who's lo who love this particular language love to feel cherished and prioritized. That's me. Quality, That's me. <laughs> quality time can range from chatting over dinner to going for a long walk. Okay. Um, the third one, receiving gifts, which means we speak our love through presents ranging from small tokens to surprise deliveries. So again, I don't mind a little red bottom shoe or something. I don't know. <laughs> Here and there, you know. <laughs> and uh, love language number four, acts of service, which translates to showing and feeling love through helpful service, such as cooking a meal or cleaning out the car, et cetera. So anything that you do an, an act that you do to help your partner or your partner does for yourself. And the last one, physical touch, which means that we show and receive love through aff affirmative touching, such as holding hands, cuddling, kissing, and even sex. Um, each love language is equally important from one another. And um, it's all about diving into each of them and figuring out who you are, who your partner is, elaborating and understanding how to live harmoniously through these love languages well said amazing, <laughs> amazing. yeah so and thank you so much leave. for having me love leading ladies of ottawa <laughs> of canada <laughs> so can you can you share your handle on instagram before we leave for one of yours mm. yes so my handle is sophia j so just like it's spelled with the letter j dot co P -H. that's my instagram ph you have to say not everybody no oh okay. people oh, know s can be ph but okay, no, it's definitely P-H. <laughs> S-O-P-H-I-A-J, as in Joseph, as you know, French. Sometimes we mix the J and G, uh, <laughs> dot co. So again, it's Sophia J dot co. My handle on Instagram, you can follow me. Um, I will be also launching a relationship um, IG where I'm going to be sharing lots of tips and some amazing things to help millennials um, find and keep love. All right. So ladies, thank you so much for joining me on this conversation. It was fun. You know, when we initially thought of doing this, I was like, you know, we want a vibe where it's like, we're just a bunch of girls hanging out like we would be if we were at whoever's house having a glass of wine. So this was fun. I haven't seen many of you since the <laughs> pandemic due to the restrictions and the bubbles and all of that. So it was fun to be able to have a conversation with you ladies about this topic. And I hope that our viewers have also enjoyed learning about the five love languages. I'm hoping that they can maybe see which one they are and that it, hopefully it helps them in their relationships. So again, thank you everyone. Thanks to the viewers for listening and have a good night. Bye ladies. Bye. Bye.